Okay, so we've got the Stack Navigator set up. Using this is really simple. You can go to the home screen. We can add a button in here like this button. Make sure you select from React Native, not React Native Web. Um, and this, the buttons are self-closing here, so we don't need a, a closing tag. Uh, and then we can say title equals click me, and then uh, on press, so this will be the click handler, uh, we can stick a function in here like this. So just do an inline function, an anonymous function, and all we're going to do is navigate to a different screen. So the home screen, or any component for that matter, will take a props a parameter. And when we use a React Navigation and set a component this way, React Navigation will automatically pass in a navigation prop. So we can say um, props.navigation.navigate, um, like this. And inside there, we need to put the name of the view we want to go to. Now, we don't have another view yet, so I'll go back to app.js. And what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this, uh, this screen right here. Paste it below. Oh, I'm, I'll fix the tabbing or the spacing issue. Uh, we can call this um, screen two. This is just to show you. We'll delete this soon, uh, and this can be any other screen. We had a um, settings screen, didn't we? Uh, settings screen. Is this going to import for us? No, it didn't import. So I'll go up to the top and I'll uh, copy it or import it manually, I should say. Settings screen uh, from, I'll say, oops dot slash screens slash uh, setting screen like this. Okay, so we've got the setting screen and I'll put that there, great. The, the title, it doesn't really matter, like I said, this is a uh, just a dummy screen, we'll get rid of this soon. I'll just give it a title of settings. So copy this name and then go back to home screen, paste it in there, and now if I click this, it should take me to that screen. So it's gone to the setting screen, we're here and we can go back. So that's a real simple usage of the Stack Navigator. But like I said, that was just a test. We're actually going to get rid of this. Uh, we'll come back and add more screens to the Stack Navigator later. But for now, we'll keep it as just the one screen in there, just the main or the home screen. All right, so give it a save. OK, what's next? Well, we're going to add the uh, Tab Navigator or the Bottom tab, tab Navigator. So I'll go to here and I'll just search for Bottom uh, Tabs. And you should see Bottom Tab Navigator. And you'll see the bottom tab navigator looks like this. It's got these cool bottom tabs and lets you change pages. So we're going to install this. So type this out or copy it if you're on this page. This is the install. And I'll, oh, I need to stop my um, terminal. So press Control C. And I'm going to paste that and let that run. And let me just check if there's any more uh, in the meantime that we need to install. And I think that's it. So there's nothing else we need to do. We can just go ahead and use it. And you can see it looks very similar to uh, the Stack Navigator. So I'll go back to here. Oops, go back to my app.js. That ran now, installed. Uh, and just like we created a Stack Navigator here, I'll create a Tab Navigator. But I'm going to do this as a separate component. So I'll say uh, const tab equals create tab. Create bottom tab navigator, it should be. Create bottom tab navigator, and it should have added this import for you. And then in there, I'll say const tab navigator equals, and then this will just be a component. And then that's going to return uh, our React native element. So here is going to be the actual tab navigator. So in the parentheses, I'm just going to create the tab navigator. So I'll say tab, which is what I called it here, tab dot navigator close that off and then in there we'll go ahead and create our screen so you can see we just need a tab dot screen and it follows the same sort of pattern as we used here uh, oops I scrolled down um, you know we've got the name the component and any options so if I go to here we'll just create a screen by saying tab dot screen and then I'll close that off and this name can be uh, this will be the home screen and I'll move this onto the line below because we'll, we'll add some more properties here. Um, so home screen, or name home, component is going to be home screen. I know what you're thinking, we already had this down there, but we're gonna get rid of this real soon, so just bear with me for a second. So component is home screen, and we'll set some options there. Uh, uh, this will be an object, so you double um, curly braces. We'll say tab bar label. Uh, this is the, like the title of the label, uh, or sorry, of the tab bar. So this will be home. And then we will come back and set the icon soon, but for now, we'll just leave it as that. And what I'll do is duplicate that. So control C, paste it below, and I'll fix the spacing. 
This will be um, saved, and this can be saved screen. It didn't add the input for me. That's a shame. So I'll go up to here and add it manually again. So I've copied that line, I've duplicated it. Um, that was by pressing Alt, Shift, and the down arrow, or Option, Shift, and down arrow, I should say, because I'm on a Mac. And we'll change this to, instead of setting screen, this will be saved screen. And it's not going to import from there, it's going to import from saved screen. So now we've got the saved screen. The tab bar label will be saved. And I'll copy and paste this one more time on the line below. So I'll press Alt, Shift, or Option, Shift, and down. And I'll fix the spacing there. And this will be settings. So settings is the name, and this will be settings screen, and then finally the tab bar label will be settings. So all we need to do now is stick this tab navigator in the stack navigator. So I've copied the name of that, and I'm going down to here, and I'm going to replace home screen with tab navigator. So I'll give that a save, and now if I run this, npm start, we should see some bottom tabs. Okay, cool, that worked. We've got some bottom tabs here. I know the titles look a bit weird because we've got two, but we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, but you can see, if I click, you can see save there, takes it to the save screen, settings takes it to the settings screen, and uh, we're making some progress. So let's go ahead and fix this, shall we? What I'll do is scroll up to my tab navigator, and in the tab navigator root element itself, I'm gonna set some options there. So I'll say screen options, and I'll set these to an object, so you double parentheses, uh, sorry, you double curly braces again. Let me just tab this over a bit. We're going to say header shown is going to be false. And if I save that, you see it gets rid of that. Great. And wait, that's actually it. I thought I was going to add something else, but no, that's actually it. So if you want to, you can move this onto one line if you want to make it a little bit uh, more concise like that. And give it a save, and we should be good there. So now we've got rid of that second title. So we've got these question mark icons at the bottom, which is a bit weird. So we'll go ahead and install Expo Vector Icons. So I'll go to Google, type in Expo Vector Icons, and click on this link here, docs.expo.dev. Not the top one, because the top one will give you the library of icons that we're using. So we don't want that for now. We'll go to the docs.expo.dev. Should see a page like this, and I'll go ahead and install this. It's just a package that gives us a ton of icons we can use, which will, be, which will come in handy for us at the bottom there. So let me uh, scroll down to the command I need to run. Where, do we, where is it? So we can actually just install it from here, actually. We can just take this name here, and I'm going to um, just run the command npm install. Oops. Well, I'll need to stop my uh, terminal by pressing Control c And I'll say npm install and expo vector icons. And now we should be good to go on that. So. Um, I'll actually go back, and I'll go to that top link that I told you not to click originally, but um, these are all of our icons. So we want an icon for the uh, home screen, this home one right here, so I can type in home, and you can see a ton of icons we're gonna use. Now, there's, there's subtext underneath this, and typo, feather, this is the icon library, or the icon provider, if you wanna call it that. So it's really easy to use this. I'm gonna use this one here, so I'll click on that, for example, and you've only got to add two lines. The first one is the import, so I'll click copy on that, and I'll go back to here, scroll up to the top, uh, and I'll just add that there. So it's added in typo, the, the icon provider, and then use it just by pasting this line. So what I'll do is I'll go back down to um, my tab navigator, and underneath tab bar label home, I'll say tab bar icon, and then this will be, uh, you need to put a function there, because technically it's a component, and I'll just um, return, oops, that. Now, since it's only one line in this function, you can get rid of the curly brackets if you want to, uh, and the return statement, and just have it like that. So if I save that now, you should see, oh no, I need to run it first, and <laughs> my uh, server stopped. So once I start this, you should see a tab bar icon there. So I can kill the app or compress R in here in the terminal to reload it. It should reload the app. And hopefully you'll see an icon. And there we go, we can see the icon. The color's not really right uh, and it looks a bit weird, but uh, it's an easy fix. This function here that we're using to return the icon can take an, an object, it can take some props 
And this props has um, a, a size property. So props.size we can put there. And it also has a color property. So inside there we can put curly brackets and then props.color. Okay, give that a save. And we should see it change. So it's gray now. If we click it, it should turn blue. Cool. So what these are, these props.size and props.color, these are the uh, size and the current color that it's using by default. So it's just giving us the defaults right there. Um, so it knows when to be blue and it knows when it needs to be gray based on whether it's selected or not. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and copy that line. I'll add it for the other ones too. So underneath saved, I'll say comma and then paste that in there. And I'll also do it for settings. So comma, paste it there. Now they should all have the, the home icon at the moment, which they do. Great. So let's go ahead and find one for the saved uh, saved screen. Now I want to use a star, so I'll search for star. And I found one that's also in the in typo um, library. I can click that. And since we've already got the, the import for this, I can ignore this line and only use this one. So I could copy it again and paste it in here, but the only thing different is the name in this case. So I'll just take star uh, and just update um, home. Name equals home to name equals star. And if I save that, you should see it turn to a star. Great. And then finally, we want one for settings. So I'll say settings. Oops. Now, there isn't, uh, there isn't a settings for the font uh, package that we were just using. So I can just take any of these. So this one, for example, from Ionicons. So I'll click on that. And since we don't have this import yet, I do need that. Um, so I can scroll up and add that underneath here. But because they're both from the same library, I could just move this import to here, say comma, and then there, and that should do the same thing. So now that we've got our icons, we can use the font by copying that. And I'll scroll down, oops, scroll down to here and replace this with that. But again, we want to do the same thing with the size and the props. So I can copy that from above and just replace those. And now if I save that, you should see we got these icons now. So there you go. We've got a bottom tab set up, moving between screens, and we've got some cool icons too.